Well, then we're getting ready for the next part of the Easter programme, really. It finishes, of course, on Saturday with the game at Accrington. But can you bring us up to date with how the injured situation is? Obviously, you lost a couple of players on Monday and you've, you've had a couple progressing in Courtney Baker, Richardson and Joel Tabernet. Yeah, um, long in turn, uh, Ed, we will assess again tomorrow. Um, they've not done a lot today, um, so we'll get a better idea tomorrow in terms of where they're up to. Um, Courtney has been outside doing some um, physical work, um, which is good. Um, obviously, to pass him around a little bit in that area. Um, and then we've got to wait to see what type of response he has, but he's, he's looking good. Joel Taberner um, is even further ahead in terms of where we thought he would be. Um, so, again, looking positive and hopefully have involved in over the next week or so. Um, so, really positive. Don't want to go on about it too long because it was, it was a bad day at the office on, on yep. Monday. But you've got to put that behind you. You've analysed it, you've assessed it all. But how, as a management team, do you go about lifting the players if they, if they did feel a bit down? Um, you just... I like to think I'm generally positive anyway. Um, you know, it was obviously a setback, wasn't it? We, we can't do anything about that. It, that. That is gone, it's the same to players, but we can damn sure try and do something about it um, moving forward. Um, and that doesn't, that's not a promise we're going to win every football game because you don't, because you're a football team, that happens. Um, but in terms of what we look like without the football, we can sure put that right and, and we put measures in place to make sure that looks different come Saturday. You've got a six-point advantage, you're fifth, sixth in, in the table, there's still a lot of positives there, and you, I'm sure you can use that as a motivation tool as well, where, you, where you're standing with five to play. Absolutely, and we've, we've got to enjoy it, in that, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure enjoying um, picking my wits against these managers up there, um, week in, week out, and I'm sure the players are doing exactly the same on the pitch, and like I say, we're, we're in a really strong position, aren't we? Um, and it's about looking forward, Graham. You, you can, you can put the recent run of form into a group, and you know we we, we had a, a dip off at Christmas for obvious reasons, um, but we haven't done it up until that point. And the, and the group are strong-willed, and, and they want to achieve something. Um, so you know we know what we've got, what areas we need to improve in, um, to make the position even stronger. But we've got to enjoy being in this position. You know, the pressure's on the other side, it's not on, not on crew. No one give us a hope of being where we are. Um, so no pressure on us. Um, pressure's on the other teams. They've got to make sure they keep winning as well. Yeah, it's a, a case of, you know, being realistic, just remaining with cool heads because, as you quite rightly pointed out, you're striving to win promotion, not fighting to stay in the Football League. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the right word, game. Cool, having a cool head. Um, I, th I think I've been quite good at that in terms of keeping my emotions in check really easy as a football manager just to go in and start throwing cups around and, and etc and effing and jeffing at players but I think it's important you have time to assess it you know it's hard after the games to speak to yourselves to speak to the other media you've, you've not you've not assessed the situation the game and what's happened you, you're off emotion which is brilliant because football's about emotion um, but it's important that as staff we have a cool head um, and like I say, I'm generally a positive person anyway, um, and, and I want the group to represent that. I want them to be positive. Um, I want them to enjoy um, the situation that we're in. Do you stick with the same sort of routine into your preparation, your build up, at this particular time when results aren't going favourably? Um, yeah, you do. Um, and I th but I think it's just reminders in terms of what, how, how, and when we look best um, as a team. Um, Formation, looking at the formation, um, was it played properly, etc. All those type of things. So then that's on me, isn't it? And the coaching staff, also the players and the ex executing um, when we play the different format. You know, but the, the messaging and how we work, it, it won't change. The, the messaging in terms of how we look best um, just gets reiterated. Um, and, and the messages have generally been taken on by the players this season. And then we, we need that to happen over the next couple of games. Well, the last time out on your travels, you came back with a clean sheet and the point from the hard place to go to in Gillingham. You've got two away games in succession. First one is the main one, of course. But can it just ease a little bit of pressure for the players away from home? Um, I'm not sure. I think we, we enjoy playing at home. We obviously um, got a bit of stick, didn't we, on Monday, rightly so. Um, but we're all big enough. We're, we're adults to be able to take that and accept that. Um, that comes with all the claps you get but also we've had during the season so you've got to be able to take that but no we want our team to be able to enjoy playing at home um, as much as possible 
up until the recent past, our, our own form's been pretty good since I've been the manager. Um, so obviously we need that to improve and improve quickly. Um, and I think, without knowing the stat off the top of my head, our, our away form looks reasonably good as well. And hence that's why we are where we are. We're in for a tough game. We're going to have to be disciplined with everything we do. Um, but show different sides to the game in terms of what we didn't show on Monday. You've spoken many times about how well the supporters have backed you both home and away. And football players, when they're winning games, it's quite easy to just keep going on and tuning it out and tuning it out and, it's, and they feel good. But supporters are needing more than ever, I would think, when they're just having a little bit of a dip in, in results. Yeah, of course they are. Um, they give you the confidence, the backing, and, um, but we have to give them something to show about. And like I say, our fans have been brilliant with our players. We've been clapped off pitches when we've lost the games away from home. They've been fantastic. Um, they weren't happy on Monday. It's the newest game just gone, and rightly so. But we have to take that. What I would say is I've spoke to fans since Monday. They've not been happy with me, but they do it in, the, in a good way, and I totally accept that. It's part and parcel of the job. It's, if it was happening 10 games on the bounce, then I would be worried. Um, but, but it's not. We're going through a difficult spell. We've got some injuries, um, and, and I'm sure everyone together, because like I said, I think they've been... They've been really good. I'm not saying that to get any pats on the back or any kudos off the fans or anything like that. Um, I'm just saying what I'm seeing. I think they've been generally excellent. If you put a performance in like you do on Monday, you don't expect your own fans to be standing there clapping you off. You expect to get what you want, what you deserve. And it's up to us to, to um, put some pride back into them after what happened Monday. Well, you're head to Accrington. The, the long-serving managerial team has now departed under new management. What have you taken from what he's done? Um, I think I, I think Accrington have generally under John played some really good football anyway. Um, I think they, they play with a lot of freedom, um, a lot of energy and, and the sim similarities in terms of how he's moving that forward and just taking that on um, with the players he's got. But they've got they've got good players and I really like Accrington as a football club. You know, they, they, there's a bond there, isn't there, between everybody, the fans, the, 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 you know, chipped in in the past to help out and all that type of stuff. And um, I, it's, it's a tough game, um, but we've got to make it an even tougher game for them. That's what we've got to do um, on Saturday. Just on one final point, on a personal individual note, you've not been named manager of the month, but you've been in the shortlist for two of those. It must be a great feeling that you're in a shortlist of three managers for the manager year, whatever way it goes. You must be well pleased with this season. Hopefully there's going to be more to come. The way that it's, you've run about it and your staff that are behind you and your players. Yeah, and I'd like to congrat congratulate the staff. You know, Ryan coming in on board has been absolutely amazing for me. Um, the players, congratulate them. Um, also the staff, the ground staff, Keith the kit man, um, physio Dan, Joe, sports science. Because um, I always say it's easy because your name gets associated, but the work that they're doing, it, you know, they're, it's making my job so, so much easier. Um, and congratulate them because without them, and particularly the players, um, managers don't get them type of recognitions. Um, on a personal note, really proud. Um, funny that I'm up against my old manager, uh, my old gaffer, so I'll look forward to um, having a glass of wine with him and hopefully clapping him. Congratulations when he wins it. Is it winner buys the wine? He'll be buying the wine.